Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and today we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have hit our shelves in the last week. Let's check them out. Alright, this first knife is the Spyderco Bombshell. And we are going to leave a link in the description for this knife, but it's not actually going to be up immediately when this video goes live. Uh, it should be Thursday the 25th when this video goes up. This is actually going to be available the very next day, Friday the 26th. So keep your eyes peeled on our Instagram channel uh, when we're going to put a post up when these are live and uh, truly able to be ordered. But I have a feeling we're not going to have any next week, so I wanted to show you uh, on this video here before they were gone. The Spyderco Bombshell, this is what they're calling a flash batch rather than a sprint run. And what that means essentially is that these are only going to be made once, and once these are gone, they're gone for good. Now the price on this is going to be $280, and there are only 1,250 in this batch. You've got the, uh, that number here on the inside of the liner, as well as each piece being individually serialized. This one here is number 166 of 1250. Now the blade here is, when I measured it from tip to scale, hits right just a hair under that three inch mark. So for those of you where that's important, you've got a lot of blade here in that length. And as you can see from the shape, this is definitely a Michael Birch design. We've got 20 CV steel, kind of this uh, bull nosed uh, drop point here with a hollow grind to keep things a little thinner behind the edge because we do start with some some decently thick uh, thick blade stock. It's not a, a sharpened pry bar by any stretch of the imagination, but there's definitely a lot of strength here and that carries through to the handle. As you can see from these liners, they're nice and thick. We've got a good bit of space between the handles and some nice OD green G10 slabs on each side. Make it, even though it's a smaller knife, like I said, just a three inch blade, you can get a really meaty handhold on this knife. It's gonna let you really power through some things as you need it. Got a nice pocket clip here on the one side, right side tip up, and it is a liner lock as you can see. That liner itself is nice and thick. It's made out of titanium. Uh, you're gonna get a really good amount of lock up here, or a really good lock up I should say. I've got no blade play in any direction whatsoever. Uh, just feels nice and solid. And then you've got that, uh, that lightweight nature of titanium as well so it doesn't weigh the knife down too much. Now it's definitely a cool knife. It may not be my personal cup of tea, but like I said, I know you guys are excited for it. If you happen to be one of those people, make sure you click the link tomorrow. Uh, check out our Instagram page, as I said, uh, and that'll let you know exactly when they go live so you can jump in and get it. And like I said, we will leave a link in the description on this video as well. Just if you're watching this on the first Thursday when this came out, don't expect it to be able to order it just yet. Just a little bit of patience will be rewarded. All right, next up, we've got a new fixed blade from Benchmade. This is the 202 Lyuku. Um, technically not brand new. We did have our first batch of this come in uh, a little bit ago, but I wasn't able to show you on our videos here because our entire first batch went to filling our pre-orders. Uh, so this is actually the first time uh, I've gotten a chance to hold this knife uh, since, that, uh, since before that first batch came in. I didn't even get my hands on one of the, that first batch. Uh, but that's important to note, we do take pre-orders on, uh, on regular line items. Uh, so you can get your spot in line and not have to wait constantly refreshing the page uh, in order to get uh, get your order in when some of these new items do come in. But as of right now when we're shooting this video, we do have more in stock and they're ready to be ordered. All our pre-orders have been filled so far. Now the 202 is of course the uh, the bigger brother to the, uh, the model number 200, the Puko. Uh, that Benchmade put out previously, I think a couple of years ago. Uh, this Lyuku comes with a larger blade, about 5.2 inches long, as opposed to the sub four inch blade of the Puko. But like the Puko, this, uh, this does have the Lyuku blade, which both of those are traditional Finnish knife patterns, but this iteration is all American. We've got 3V steel, nice and tough, excellent performance on an outdoors knife. And we have an over molded handle over a full tang. This is a full tang knife, a lot of strength here. Thickness on the blade is about an eighth of an inch, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, 3V is certainly gonna give you a lot of toughness. You don't really need it to be that much thicker in order to have a lot of strength because you still want this knife to, uh, to slice pretty well too. To that end, they've gone with a, uh, a flat grind. And as you can see, it's a little shorter here near the heel than it is as it gets out towards uh, the belly of the blade itself. 
So kind of like, uh, it's, it's not exactly like, but you can kind of think of it in a similar way to like Rick Hinderer's slicer grind. You're gonna have a little bit more uh, thickness on the main bevel of the flat grind back here. So it's a little more stout, a little more, uh, a little more chunky, and a little bit more slicing capability out here near the belly, which is gonna be important when you're doing those slicing tasks, whether you're uh, using this as a larger hunting knife or you're doing food prep or any type of slicing here. You know, you're gonna get a little bit more efficiency uh, thanks to that slightly higher grind out there. The finish is satin, but like most Benchmade satins, you do kind of have a, like a little bit of a light stonewashed texture going on there. The handle itself is contoured very nicely. If you like a, uh, like a rubberized handle, this is gonna be very comfortable and be right up your alley. One thing to note, sort of in a, uh, a nod to the finished tradition, there's no uh, prominent finger guard here, so you'll have to be a little bit more careful when you're kind of roughly handling this knife. But as a result, you don't have anything sticking out there to get into your way of the smaller, really intricate detail tasks you might want to do, like some reverse cuts uh, where you want to get right up there near the heel of the blade. And doing some of those smaller tasks actually feels really good. The balance point on this is very nice. It sits right there at the index finger. So even though this is a bit of a longer blade, being just over five inches, it moves very agilely. You're not fighting the weight distribution of the knife whatsoever. We've also got a nice black leather sheath. Comes here with a fire steel loop on the side. It's a little bit of a narrower loop, although you might be able to stretch that out to fit some of the, the fatter fire steels out there. And you've got on the back a belt loop here, as well as a dangler with a snap uh, release here. So you can carry it a little bit lower gets it out below your, uh, your, your big winter coat. Or if you're a bushcraft person and you're carrying something like this, your anorak, you know, I have them too. I'm one of those guys. I've got my wool anorak. Uh, but this will hold that below the hemline a little bit better. Uh, one other important thing to note for you, uh, you bushcraft hardcore folks out there, is the spine of this knife is not quite crisp enough to strike a fire steel, uh, but it's not super rounded over either. So if you wanted to mod that to be a little crisper, it probably wouldn't be too difficult to get you where you wanted to be. All right, next up, and I know another highly anticipated knife is the new Bull Mastiff from Civivi, who of course is the, uh, the budget sister brand to We Knife Company. And we've now got this new uh, folding flipper cleaver in stock right now, and it's pretty darn cool. Now, obviously we've got a very distinctive shape here, uh, but the overall formula hews pretty closely to the Civivi uh, kind of playbook, so to speak. Price is $50 or just a, a, a penny under, $49.99. We've got uh, the blade itself comes in about three inches. We've got a flipper with ball bearings in the pivot, a liner lock, and a deep carry pocket clip. That's all as you would expect. One thing where this differs slightly is instead of D2 steel, which most of their lineup comes with, we've got 9CR18 MOV, which is very different from uh, 8CR13 MOV. I know a lot of folks aren't really particular fans of that. Even though this sounds pretty similar, it actually is pretty different. Uh, the performance you're gonna get with this 9CR is much more akin to something like 440C. As a result, you're gonna get some good edge retention and it's gonna be more, stain, uh, more stainless, more corrosion resistant than D2 will. But despite just looking cool and flipping open quite nicely, as I said, we've got ball bearings in the pivot and Civivi always tunes their knives quite nicely, is this is a cool looking blade, but it's gonna be a hard working blade as well. It's basically just a, a big sheep's foot, kind of. You know, obviously you don't have the, the hump down here. It is kind of clipped out. But in terms of the way you actually use it, it's a long, uh, mostly straight edge, great for utility work, great for dragging the tip along things, cutting through things that way, great for powering through some bigger cuts. Now, the blade uh, stock isn't super thick, and they've kept a full flat grind on it, so the slicing geometry as a result is going to be pretty phenomenal. We've also got this nice fuller along here that uh, extends out through the spine uh, at the front of the knife. It looks pretty cool, and in addition to that, you can also use it as a, uh, a thumb opener if you'd rather not flip it. That's uh, kind of a neat little trick uh, that that, uh, that gains you in the process. The handles here are G10. We've got the blue one here. We've also got a, uh, an OD or a Ranger green. Uh, as well as black G10 if you want something a little less flashy. But I always like blue, it kind of, it helps to kind of soften the image of a knife sometimes. It looks a little more friendly, so to speak. Um, but yeah, it's a cool color here. The length is pretty good, about a three and a half finger grip for me. And you've got a little bit of a finger choil up here. I do have pretty fat fingers and it's a little cramped for me. Uh, if you have smaller hands or smaller fingers, it might not be uh, as much of an issue for you. 
but throw it in your pocket. It carries nice and easy thanks to that deep carry pocket clip. The, uh, the screws are nested in a little bit so they don't stick up and give you give something else to grab on your hem. Although the, uh, the pocket clip itself isn't nested, so you, you do have that little, one little lip to get over. But throw it in your pocket, carry it around day to day, works great as a utility knife. Probably decent as a little uh, impromptu uh, food prep knife as well. But uh, it's going to look pretty cool in the process too. All right, the biggest news so far this week, uh, biggest at least in terms of quantity, is we've actually got a huge new batch of artisan cutlery models that have just hit our site, uh, as well as CJRB, which is the uh, kind of like Civivi to We Knife Company, CJRB is the budget sister to uh, artisan cutlery. And we have their new kinetic flip model in, in stock now. A few different variations. You may have seen the artisan kinetic tool before. It's a couple things. It's a multi-tool, it's a butterfly knife trainer, and it's an automatic knife or an automatic tool because there's no actual edge. Um, those started around $70 for the full size version or $60 for the mini. Well, the CJRB version simplifies the construction a little bit and they managed to get it down uh, to just under $40. Bucks. Now, the multi tool arm itself, I probably shouldn't call it a multi tool because uh, it, it is just a bottle opener. <laughs> it's not so much a multi tool in this case. Uh, so they've simplified it a little bit there. Uh, you've got still the same mechanism, though, the same automatic mechanism here at the back. Uh, the handles are a little more simply constructed. We've got G10 scales and metal scales here uh, at the top. I'm not sure what, uh, what metal those are. They're probably stainless. Yes, they are. It is stainless steel there. Uh, this is the digital camo version. Of course, we do have a couple different colors if you prefer something a little bit different. We've got a latch here at the end. Now, in terms of the, uh, the flipping action, in terms of uh, its actual use as a butterfly knife, it's still pretty good. Uh, it's not going to flip like a, a dedicated ballast song will, but it's not bad at all. Certainly good enough to learn on and practice your tricks without having to worry about cutting yourself. And the ultimate party trick, just hit that button right there, and it's an automatic. It's not a switch blade because there's no actual blade, but it's essentially a switch blade without the edge, which is pretty cool, and it's almost half the price of the standard full-size kinetic tool. Um, you know, just 40 bucks, you do give up some of the multi-tool capability, but it's probably just as fun exactly like this. All right, next up, we're gonna jump up to the full artisan cutlery stuff. Uh, and this is just a sampling of the new models. Uh, we'll leave links to, uh, to all of it down there below, but this is the blowback coming in at 208.33 right now. Now at the heart of this is their recoil lock, which you can actually see it back here. It's kind of this yoke that interfaces with the back of the blade. Now, even though something like the uh, like Benchmade's Axis Lock, that crossbar style of lock, the patent is uh, is open for anyone to work on right now. They were actually working on this lock uh, a little bit earlier to try and get around some of those patents because even though it looks very different, you kind of operate it in a very similar way. You can grab it from either side of the knife, pull it down, and then you can flip the blade closed. Keeps your fingers out of the edge, out of the way of the edge, which I always appreciate and still allows them to keep the flipper uh, sticking out there at the back as well, which is quite nice. So you can flip it open as normal. I will say though, be a little bit careful with your finger. If you push a little too hard and you keep the pressure down, you may actually be pulling that, uh, that lock bar back a little bit, or not, it's not a lock bar, but you know what I mean. You may actually be pulling that lock bar back a little bit, which can cause the blade to bounce back just a little bit. You'll get used to it once you know what to look out for. Just don't, don't hold that lock back with your finger but it also operates just like an axis lock would. You can pull it back, flick it open and close with just a little bit of wrist action. Beyond the cool lock, it's definitely got a cool look as well. It's gonna be a very usable knife too. We've got titanium handles in a few different colors. I just happened to pick the black one here. Although they do, uh, they do come in artisans kind of bevy of, of brighter colors. They're known for putting some brighter colors on their knife, knives. We'll get to some of that in a, in a minute. Uh, and then we've got a Damascus blade. And the Damascus that Artisan uses is a VG10 Damascus. So you're still gonna get uh, some pretty good performance as well as the cool looks. It's not just for looks, you're still gonna get a good steel behind it. One of the great things about a lock like this is it is ambidextrous. And so to that end, I'm glad to see they've given it uh, holes on this side for the pocket clip as well. Got a nice low profile milled pocket clip and that can go on either side. So lefties or righties will have no problem with this blade, with this knife whatsoever. We've got a good amount of length on the handle, even for larger hands. And then you've got that nice size, nicely sized finger choil in this case for my hand right above it. 
Uh, you've got a lot of ramp essentially on the front end of this flipper tab that gives you a lot to kind of lock into. So you can really get a nice meaty grip if you need to, or do a little more delicate, uh, use that tip a little more nicely. All right, the blade length on that's about three and three quarters. This next knife is even a little bit larger, uh, almost four inches. This is the Tradition Flipper, and I'm actually really smitten with this. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than I uh, normally want to carry myself, but the overall shape and everything is very nice. Price on this is about 187 or just, uh, just over 187 right now. Although currently we've actually got this on sale for just 130 or 129.95 uh, for a limited time. So you do, if you want a deal on this, now's the time to act. Again, we've got a Damascus blade and it's that good VG10 Damascus. And you can see on the spine of this knife, you can see a little bit on the other one, but it's a little more clear here. You can actually see that separation right there. We've got a solid uh, VG10 core with Damascus cladding on the outside. And that is very visible here. And you can even see that right behind the edge as well with that little bit of space. Handles are titanium, and again, I've got the black here, but there are a few different colors that you can get. Action's quite good. You've got your ball bearings in the pivot, you've got your titanium frame lock, you got your lock bar insert there at the top of the, the lock bar itself for nice uh, longevity. Really good flipping action. It's really satisfying too with the length of this blade. You have a little bit more weight that's moving around and it feels really solid. Again, you've got a nice roomy handle with this knife as well, in addition to having that finger choil there at the front that even I can fit my hand, my fingers into. We've also got another milled titanium pocket clip, and this one is reversible, but they've put a, uh, a blockout plate on the front so you don't have to look at uh, some empty holes like you would on this. I know that, that doesn't bother me, I know that bothers some people, so this knife has that plate there to keep those people happy. But it's a really cool design, a nice premium take on a very useful drop point blade that's going to do, you know, it's a drop point blade. It's very versatile. You're going to be able to do just about anything. If you want a blade shape and design that's a little more distinctive, however, might I interest you in this. This is called the Eterno. Uh, this one comes in uh, at 237 Although right now, as I mentioned before, we are having a sale on some of this artisan stuff. You can get this for a really good deal right now, just under 155 for your money this time around, we're getting an M390 blade, so more cutting performance than that VG10 Damascus, uh, just without the, the eye-catching looks. And you're going to get this sort of modified blade shape. It's a, a little bit sheep's foot, a little bit worn cliff. We've got a little bit of a, a hint of, of curve here at the edge itself. It's going to be a very useful blade shape day to day, for sure. You know, I always mention that a drop point is going to be very versatile, but you're still going to be able to do a lot of work day to day with this blade, too. Got a flat grind, a little bit of a fuller here. It's uh, on the smaller side though. I don't know, let's see. I haven't tried to open it with, uh, with my thumb yet. Let's see if it works. Works pretty well. Uh, that's gonna be no problem whatsoever. And then you got a little bit of a swedge here uh, running most of the length of the spine so it kind of knocks off that right angle so it's gonna help it to move through material a little bit better. But behind that blade is an expected titanium frame lock flipper, this time in one of the more colorful options with the uh, the green titanium, but there's a, uh, I think there's a blue and also a, a rose color right now. Um, I could be mistaken by that. You'll have to check the website. We've also got a nice carbon fiber inlay that shows up on both sides of the handle. As you can see, the pocket clip here rests on the top of the inlay there at the back. And it's not completely flush with the handle, which I actually kind of like. It's kind of a, uh, almost like a pillow emboss, if you know, if any of you uh, like paper finishers out there know what I'm talking about. Um, so you get a little bit of a ridge. Uh, it's not uncomfortable. It's not going to bring up a hot spot. Uh, it's kind of nice. It's something a little bit different, a little bit of a different execution. But the overall handle here, again, is nice. There's a little bit more contouring on this particular handle. The previous two we looked at were kind of flat. Um, I think it, it shows up really well here at the back. You can see a little bit of that curve, which is going to help to make it feel pretty darn comfortable in the hand, and yet still giving you a lot of handle to work with. Less of a choil on this one, but you do have that ramp from the flipper right there at the heel of the blade, so you can kind of choke up, put your index finger on the end of that, which is going to make you, uh, you know, kind of give, give you those similar capabilities of using the tip a little more finely. This knife also is very conducive to a pinch grip as well. Next up, and probably my favorite from Artisan this week, is the new smaller version of the Hyperion flipper, coming in right now at about 183. This blade is a little bit shorter than the original, which had something like a four inch blade. Here we have one that's under three inches, and it's 
even though it's smaller, you've got that same great kind of Lanny's clip folder look, just instead of being uh, used in a traditional slip joint pattern as the Lanny's clip is traditionally, you've got an all modern titanium frame lock flipper. VG10 Damascus again, ceramic bearings in the pivot, and some nice carbon fiber onlays here on this particular one, but there are a few other different options with a nice uh, titanium bolster here at the top. Lock bar release on the back hides underneath the, uh, the onlay, so some people would call this a bolster lock, although I don't you typically like to use that term. I think it has some different connotations. Uh, but you've still got a, uh, a lock bar insert on the end of the lock bar for that really good uh, longevity and performance. Got a hidden lanyard point here. Just a really cool gentleman's knife. Nice small package. Like I said, three inch blade, so it's gonna be a little bit better for a gentleman's knife than the larger knife. But you still have the heritage of the old school slip joint that's just gonna be useful for so, so many things. All right, one more from Artisan. Uh, and this one looks like a slip joint because it is a slip joint. This is the Biome coming in very affordable at just under $28 right now. The blade again, we've got something here that's under three inches and we've got 12C27 blade steel. So it's gonna take a really fine edge, hold it pretty well. Just one of those really solid budget steels that really outperforms its price point in my opinion. Blade shape, versatile drop point, everything you need in a small slip joint. And we've got G10 handles, this particular one, coming in with the translucent green G10, or that, uh, that kind of jade G10 look. And we've even got a, uh, a lanyard attachment point on this as well, here hidden at the back of the spine. The handle gives just enough length. Um, I have slightly larger hands, and I know someone in the comments made a, uh, a comment a couple weeks ago, turn it into a drinking game whenever I have slightly larger hands. I don't recommend that. But I do have slightly larger hands, and I still have enough for a, uh, a full four-finger grip on this knife. But it's not big. You're still going to be able to pocket this very nicely. The walk and talk is pretty decent. You've got a nice half stop there, which is a good safety measure. Keeps you from closing the blade too fast and maybe nicking your finger. But it closes up quite nice. Yeah, it's just everything you need in a small, affordable slip joint. If you want something like that, but it's a little more premium and a little more old school feeling, we've got the new Legacy Trappers from Smith & Sons. Smith & Sons, of course, is an American company, but they're actually contracting with Mazarin out of Italy to produce their folders. All their fixed blades, as far as I know, all of them at least, are still produced in the USA. This knife comes in at 104. We've got a D2 blade coming in about 3 and 3 eighths of an inch long. Nice and thin with a full flat grind. It's going to be a good slicing everyday carry. Walk and talk on this knife, I would say, is extremely good. Snaps into the half stop very nicely. Snaps closed with some really nice authority, as you can probably hear over the camera. As far as opening, we've got a long pull here on the back side of the clip point blade. It keeps it a little closer to the pivot, so you might not have as much leverage as, if it, or, uh, as you would if it were a little further out. Um, so it's not quite as easy opening as some out there, but that's not to say it's hard. We're talking, you know, small degrees of a difference here. There's a few different handle options. We've got micarta, we've got carbon fiber for a classier look, but personally, this burlap micarta is my favorite. You get a real kind of old school, rugged looking vibe, and it's a little bit different from, uh, from most micartas that you get on a lot of things these days. They're contoured pretty well. They hold pretty nicely in the hand. You can kind of see the, uh, the elliptical shape there from the back end of the, the handle itself. Got a lanyard, lanyard hole in this case, uh, not an attachment point. And that hole does run through the back spacer, so there's no danger of the edge itself kind of cutting your, uh, your lanyard off if you close it a little too vigorously. As far as carry, there's no pocket clip or pocket slip with this knife, with either of these two slip joints, actually. This is just old school all the way. Slip it into your pocket and go about your business. All right, next up, we've got an extension from Boker of their Optima series. Now, this may look like your classic clip point folding lockback hunter. You know the kind I'm talking about. Uh, with a little German flair, of course. But what's cool about this is this is a exchangeable blade lockback. You can see here I've got a saw as well as a small recurve blade with a safety tip. Uh, that's the more expensive version. There's one that just has uh, two blades with it, but this one comes in at 244, just under right now. But what I like about the way they've executed this is you may never actually need to use any of those extra blades. If you're just using this as a standard lockback, you'd never know that this blade would pop out until you know the trick to, uh, to doing it. Run it through its paces, it just uh, operates just like any other lockback. It's gonna be nice and solid, 
The lockup is quite good, about what you'd expect from a solid lockback. There's a, maybe a hint of blade wiggle, but that's, uh, that's not a problem here. On top of that, the handles are done quite nicely. It's not just a flat slab. You've got a nice meaty contour to grab onto with your hand. And I like that the blade itself is a full flat grind as well. It's gonna give you some really good performance. Steel on this is 4034 stainless, in case you're wondering. Now, when it comes to the trick on getting this out, you come to the halfway mark and you, can, you kind of heard that a little bit. Now, it doesn't actually do anything until you go to that mark and you actually push that lock back down a little bit further, in which case wiggle it a little bit and you can lift it straight out. But until you go and actually push that lock bar down a little further, it's not gonna come out on its own. Like you never notice, it never gets in the way. You don't even really feel that, uh, that little step. It's really impressive. So it makes it very easy. Pull that out, pop whatever you need in. I'll do the saw here and away you go. Pretty darn cool. The tolerance are done very nicely. This is a made in Germany knife, so you would expect them to, uh, to have really nailed the engineering, and they've done it. It's just a really cool knife. Not quite a pocket knife. We do have a, uh, a sheath that goes with it, and that's gonna carry the knife, as well as giving a little spot for the two extra blades. And then the back, you can carry it either standard, up and down with the loop here, or horizontally, with these loops here, which you can uh, unvelcro to get on or off, or you can just thread through as normal. But what's nice about that, it looks a little narrow here. If you have a thicker belt, you can kind of uh, stage the velcro so it only grabs maybe half, and you can create a bit, a uh, little bit of a larger belt for yourself in the process. If you've got a really wide gun belt, you're probably not going to be able to fit it though. Uh, but anything kind of normal, so to speak. Yeah, what's normal, who knows. Uh, but anything on the, uh, the normal to mid, or small to mid size belt uh, is gonna have no problem with these. All right, now we're gonna go to a Boker Plus. This thing uh, couldn't be more different than, the, uh, than that Optima right there. Uh, this is a much more modern looking design. This is the Warbird Flipper. Price on this comes in about 105. We've got a D2 blade. Uh, it's stonewashed coming in about 3.6 inches. The handle itself is aluminum. You can see we've got some really nice fluting or machining uh, running throughout the whole handle. We've got some character lines as well as a diagonal milling pattern uh, to give you a little bit more surface area so it grips nicely. Uh, it's not aggressive, but it's not gonna be slick at the same time. Turning the knife over, you can see we've got a nice deep carry pocket clip here and it is reversible. And it is one of those knives, uh, think like the, uh, I mentioned the Buck Vantage a lot as having one of my favorite deep carry pocket clips in the business. It's very similar to the way they've executed it here. It's mounted from the spine with a screw that comes in um, in line with the handle as opposed to at a 90 degree angle so that the clip itself actually sits above the bottom line of the handle itself. So it is very deep and then you can just flip it around with ease to either side. And like I was mentioning earlier with that block out plate, you don't have to worry about the holes uh, on the other side of the handle since there's no holes on the sides of the handle to begin with. It's all from the back of the blade or back of the handle. The other thing I really like here, you can see we've got a liner lock, but you've got a very wide tab here that sticks out from the back side. We've also got a flipper. As you can see, it's very subtle. It's not sticking straight out. It's more of an inline flipper tab, but it still works very nicely. And then you've, you can see how the liner lock kind of drops in there and holds it open. I really like it. I really like it a, a lot, actually. The action is good, running on ball bearings. You do have a blade cut out, too. If you don't want to open it with that flipper, you can either do a, a thumb open um, or the middle finger flick works quite well also. We've got a full grip on this handle. And we don't have a finger choil, but we do have a sort of wide ricasso around the pivot. Gives you a nice flat spot where you'd still be able to choke up if you need to to get behind that edge. That edge itself is quite nice. It's pretty thin. We've got a full flat grind on this drop point blade, stone washed finish, so it's gonna be a good working blade and it's gonna look good next to those really fancy looking handles for a good long time too. All right, another Boker Plus now. Um, I know we're, we're going through a lot of knives. Thanks for sticking around with me. I know there's a lot, of, lot here on the table. Uh, this one is called the Legion. It comes in at about 67.50 right now. And it kind of reminds me of one of the other uh, Boker's other kind of classic knives at this point. It's not, I don't know how long it's been around, but it is kind of a classic. That being the Urban Trapper designed by Brad Zinker. Kind of has a similar vibe to this knife, or this knife has a similar vibe to them, I should say. 
Blade length is about uh, just over 3.4 inches, and we've got 9 CR stainless steel again with a nice stonewashed finish and a full flat grind here. Straight clip point, great, great blade shape. It's gonna work very well. I love that stonewashed finish. And it's not just a kind of a wimpy stonewash either. It's a kind of a definitive looking stonewash. It looks very good. We've also got a crown spine, which is another one of those nice touches that we see from, uh, from Boker Plus here and there at a very good price point. Usually you uh, only expect to see that on some more expensive knives. It's gonna make it very comfortable to put your thumb on or choke up with your finger or anything like that. Plus it's just nice to look at too. The handles are G10. We've got a really cool looking milling pattern here. Uh, looks almost like the, uh, like the veins of a leaf in a way. But it has a little bit of texture. Again, it's not gonna, it doesn't feel like it's gonna raise any hot spots but it, it feels really secure in the hand, even though it's just a straight handle otherwise. Also got a deep carry pocket clip uh, mounted from the side this time. This is not a rear mounted knife, uh, re rear mounted clip. It's right side tip up only in this case. But we've got a nice open back construction that's gonna make it very easy to keep this clean as you carry it in your pocket. We've only got the pivot here at the front and a single back spacer or a single barrel spacer at the back. The entire rest of the the knife is open, so it's gonna be very, very easy to pass things through there. It folds up quite nicely too. Uh, the blade almost virtually disappears, so it's gonna be a nice, uh, easy to carry knife. Doesn't take up much more space than a, a nice weighty ink pen. And then you've got ball bearings in the pivot. So pull it out, flips out very satisfyingly, and you're ready to cut in just no time at all. All right, let's start taking a look at some higher end stuff now. Uh, we've got a new model in from Olamic Cutlery right now. This is the Midtech Whippersnapper. A few different variations available. This one right here, uh, it's, they've all got titanium scales. This one has a Tex Wash Rainforest uh, handle scale. Um, basically, it's a stone washed uh, kind of green color. Although the, the undercoat, may, they may have done something a little bit different because I feel like there might be some hints of purple kind of peeking out. Um, looks pretty cool. It's very well done. And it actually ties in very nicely with the backspacer here too, which has kind of a sheen, uh, a metallic purpley sheen to it as well. well. Normally I start with the blades, but I'm talking about the handle first, so I'll keep going now. Uh, pocket clip, right side tip up only, uh, milled titanium, and you've got it standing off with some, uh, some posts basically, rather than uh, screwed straight into the handle. Uh, so you got a little bit more of a premium feel to that as well. Frame lock, this is not a flipper, at least not a conventional flipper. We've got a front flipper as well as a small blade cut out and both of those things. I'm not necessarily the best at front flipping, but this one uh, works very well for me. I'm also not always the best at the middle finger flick, but this one also works very well for me in that regard. Uh, I don't know, maybe people are starting to tune these for me specifically, but you know, probably not. But it feels that way. <laughs> uh, blade itself, under three inches, CPM 20 CV. And we've got a really nice finish here, sort of an acid washed and then stone washed. Uh, well, I guess that washed and acid washed kind of implies that. Um, acid washed finish, hollow grind, nice sheep's foot shape with a almost perfectly straight edge. There's a hint of an upward curve to it right there. Now, as far as usability, we do have a finger choil there at the back that lets me still get a full four-handed or full four-fingered grip and Get ready, people. I do have slightly larger than normal hands. Um, take a drink of Kool-Aid or something. Um, but yeah, you still get a nice full grip on this. Uh, and you can put that blade to work very nicely and it feels very cool. Uh, just something a little bit nicer than uh, what the next guy is probably carrying. Uh, and it better be because the price on these comes in at about $4.95 right now. All right, next up, I've got a Microtech. Uh, we actually get a lot of new Microtechs in here. Uh, each week, uh, I think, it seems. We're, we're always coming in uh, with new stuff. A lot of times it's restock of old things, maybe slight variations on a new one uh, or on an existing model. This particular one really caught my eye. This comes in at 280. This is an Ultratech, as I mentioned, and this has the apocalyptic orange finish, which it's not quite a stone wash because it's not quite as random or even as that, but they've essentially uh, distressed or relicked the handle right out of the, the factory. You can see where it kind of comes through that orange. You get that instant, like, can't call it pocket worn because I think Case has a, a trademark on that. But it's that kind of feel. It's broken in uh, like you've been using it for years and it's your old trusty companion. But it still has all the, uh, the advantages of being brand new. Blade steel on this one is M390. 
uh, blade length, about three and a half, but you've got a double edge, so it's you know more like uh, over six inches of edge itself, uh, almost seven inches of sharpened edge. So you're going to be able to get a lot of work done if you're using this as a utility knife. You've got your traditional Microtech pocket clip, a nice wide design that is reversible, deep, nah, not quite deep carry, I shouldn't say that. And you've got the glass breaker there at the back, and it's a Microtech, so you've got excellent OTF action. It just works exceptionally well, and I, just, I really love these d distressed orange handles. They look fantastic. But as I mentioned, we're always getting in a lot of brand new Microtech, so this is not the only new model, we've been, uh, new finish we've got in right now. We'll make sure to leave links down there uh, so you can see them all. Well, speaking of uh, some good looking orange, we've got some new Knife Center exclusives in the building uh, with some black and orange G10 on pretty much the entirety of Double Star's lineup. Now you may remember a few months ago we tested out uh, and gave away a Double Star actually. Uh, that was their Fury Machete, which is sort of a kukri inspired uh, heavy duty tool. Uh, we do have that also now in this black and orange G10. Uh, and make sure to, uh, if you want to see that video, we'll leave a link to that. But first, uh, today, I don't have one of those in front of me, but I'm going to show you this knife, which is the Light Fighter X coming in at 194. Blade here is Nitro V, uh, about four and three quarters of an inch, nice straight backed profile here with a bit of, uh, I guess you could call it a harpoon point. Uh, although not really, that would, uh, it would probably uh, be a little bit further out towards the tip if it were a true uh, harpoon point. But nice outdoors knife uh, for a hunter, I think. But they actually, I think, intend this to be a bit more of a, uh, of a tactical knife. It's going to work very well. You've got nice thick blade stock of Nitro V steel. That's one of those stainless steels that's just an all-around really good performer. Uh, very well-balanced set of characteristics. It's very tough for a stainless steel. Uh, most stainless steels can't kind of equal the toughness of some carbon steels out there. Uh, this one goes a little bit against the grain a bit there. It's going to be very rugged. Still give you some good edge retention in the process too. Got a saber grind. The geometry is flat. It's not hollow. And you've got this nice swedge running the length of the spine there. I already told you what's that, what that is good for earlier in the video. Nice handle. Good feel in the hand. It's a little bit on the flatter side. Uh, but I don't find it to be too uncomfortable. Sometimes that can be in the, the case, but I don't find that to be the case here. But the ergonomics are very good. You've got a bit of a finger guard there to keep your finger protected. Nice place for your thumb to rest here as well on the spine. As far as the sheath, we've got Kydex. As you'd expect, it fits in quite nicely. These are made in America, by the way, made down there in Kentucky. We've got some modular uh, hole spacing here, essentially, between the hole and the slot you get here. Uh, they all do come with a, uh, a locking dots modular attachment, so you can carry it uh, inverted if you want, horizontal or standard. But because of the inclusion of the slot there, you're going to be able to use things like a, a large or small tech lock if you prefer those instead. Next knife is the Chico Diablo X. Uh, this one comes in at 135. Again, we've got Nitro V steel. We've got pretty much the same style of sheath as well. This one I think is definitely uh, going to be a good hunting knife or even kind of camp kitchen knife as well thanks to this uh, almost trailing point design here. We've got a high flat grind, Nitro V steel, good stone washed finish, nice swedge here. Going to be a very slicey, slicey type of blade despite being, uh, let's see, almost 3 sixteenths of an inch thick uh, judging by my eye calipers there. The story with the handle is also very similar. Uh, feels really good, even though it's a little bit on the flatter side. The texture is nice. The shape of the handle overall is quite good. Uh, blade itself, 3.75 inches here, so you come in under that 4-inch mark. And finally, I've also got their Halson Karambit, which, check that thing out. Definitely goes a little bit further than your typical hawkbill blade shape. We've got a bunch of different edges here. Count them. We've got one, two, three, four total edges on this blade shape right here. It's definitely going to work in your traditional reverse karambit grip. We just have this kind of aggressively raked hawkbill blade uh, instead of the slightly more gentle ones that... Uh, it's funny to think of the of other karambit as having a more gentle blade shape because they all are pretty aggressive. This one's just extra aggressive. We've got your Nitro V steel again, uh, also with a kind of an acid washed finish. Comfortable handles, black and, black and orange G10. Also comes with a Kydex sheath and that dots attachment. Really, it's just a pretty cool take on the Karambit concept. All right, got one more Knife Center exclusive to show you today. Uh, it's version four of the Todd Rexford RUT. That's the Rexford Utility Tool. 
Now what this is, is essentially a small single piece multi-tool that is able to incorporate a holder for a, uh, just a standard utility blade, that hexagonal shaped, uh, or is it trapezoidal shaped? You know what I'm talking about. I'll pull it out here so you can see. You just push this button down and that releases the blade right there so you can turn it around as needed or replace it as, with a fresh one when you need a new edge. But it holds in quite nicely. It does lock into place, which is quite good. And then you can just let it drop back in when you're done using it. But it is a bona fide multi-tool because we've got a bottle opener on the back. You know, that's the primary requirement for any good bottle or any good multi-tool. We've also got a hex bit driver here as well as a uh, either a, a wide uh, flathead screwdriver or small pocket pry bar right there. This is titanium. It's got this really cool uh, maze pattern on here, this milling pattern, which makes it an exclusive to us. Price on it is, it is a little bit pricier. It's 165, but for something like this, custom made the way it is, I think it's really cool. All right, two more, and I've got some fixed blades to show you now. The first is a custom from Dwayne Dwyer. This is the BCB Bowie. We've got a seven inch CTS XHP blade, but what really makes this particular one special are the handles. They may not look like much, but they are pretty special. This is actual teak wood from the deck of the USS New Jersey, which is, as they say, the most decorated battleship in our Navy today. It's a pretty cool piece of history incorporated into this. Uh, and the, uh, the actual museum for the battleship does include a, uh, a certificate of authenticity with this. So you've got the paperwork to back it up, but it's just, it's really cool. It's something you're not gonna see every day for sure. Price is higher as a result of that, being as this is a collectible handmade piece, uh, $13.75 right now. But if you wanna go ahead and use the knife, it would certainly be a very useful design. As I said, kind of a seven inch blade. Uh, it's kind of that, uh, that default length. Think of like the, the Mark II fighter or the K-Bar knife has that seven inch combat style of blade. We've got a straight clip point, bit of a recurve, hollow ground profile to keep the edge a little bit more slicing capable but you've still got a nice thick spine to keep things plenty strong. The sheath is kind of a standard tactical nylon design. You've got a pouch here at the front for some extra goodies, retention strap at the top, Molly compatible strapping at the back, as well as a Velcro loop. Although if I were you, uh, if I were investing in this knife, I'd probably invest into some custom leather to go along with it because uh, it really deserves something super nice. But anyway, I, I won't go on too much more about this knife. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. Uh, but if it is your thing, do I really need to say much more? It's pretty cool. All right, one last knife. Again, another Boker Plus. I, may, I Maybe I should have mentioned this earlier, but uh, it might've looked too big on the table with the small folders. We've got the Commandor. Uh, it sounds kind of like Commander, but the spelling's different. Uh, coming in at 135 right now. For that, you're gonna get a pretty beastly feeling uh, outdoor slash tactical crossover blade, I'd say. Uh, blade length a bit over seven and a half inches. You've got SK5 carbon steel, so good and tough. And it does have a powder coating to kind of uh, keep the, uh, the rust monsters at bay because that is a, a carbon steel that will rust if you don't take care of it. Geometry is pretty thick. It's not quite a full quarter inch. I think we're at 0.22 inches. So plenty of strength for sure, but they do give it a full flat grind uh, to make sure you can slice pretty okay with it. The, uh, the powder coating is gonna slow things down a little bit. Uh, but that's the trade-off you make for that, uh, that extra protection for the steel itself. The handles themselves are G10 and they feel really good. They've contoured them nicely. Um, this is a perfect example of kind of the way to do, I hesitate to say a slab-sided handle, uh, but it's the, you know, maybe I will. <laughs> it's kind of slab-sided a bit, but they've rounded the, the shoulders very nicely and given you a little bit of a scoop here at the back and a little bit of a bevel here at the front. It just feels really good, a lot more different than uh, the phrase slab handled would suggest. In fact, the ergonomics and the overall handling of this knife uh, overall is what I find most impressive. Works well on a pinch grip, even though you've got a nice big long blade and the balance point, kind of similar to that bench made from earlier, sits right about there at the index finger. So even though you are gonna feel the weight a little bit more than that bench made, you're not fighting the weight distribution of the knife when you go to move it through your cutting task. It's gonna make it easier to handle. And for an almost eight inch blade, it feels like it can handle like a much smaller knife in the process. I also like that they've given you a finger guard, but it's kind of gentle. It's not a super aggressive uh, or pinchy finger guard. It definitely protects your finger, but it doesn't get in the way 
still nice and comfortable. As far as other features you get, you get you've got three hollow tubes here, so you can do that uh, that lashing trick if you're into that sort of thing, as well as a protruding pommel here at the back for some. Uh, not so much concentrating your force onto a single point, you still will be able to thump on things quite nicely with this without having to worry about damaging your scales. Uh, and if it were me, I'd go in with my knife grinder and uh, kind of crisp up that edge so that you could use this as a scraper as well. But with the coating as, as it is uh, right out of the box, you're not going to be able to do that as you would imagine. As far as the sheath, it's kind of what you would typically expect as well. Um, we've got a simple design, it fits in, uh, doesn't click into place, but you do have a retention strap here at the top. What I like about it that you don't see too often though is that we've got dual straps here at the back and they are secured with both a snap and Velcro. So it's gonna be pretty darn secure. All right guys, that's all I've got to show you this week. I know this was a long one, thanks for sticking around. Uh, but love to hear what you think about all these knives. Make sure you let us know your favorites down there in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on one of these knives yourselves, we will leave links in the description that'll take you over to the Knife Center. Uh, but just remember that uh, spider coat from the beginning, that goes live tomorrow, Friday. While you're over at the Knife Center, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program so that you can earn some free money on your next knife if you're going to be buying one of these knives anyway. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. I hope you're all staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.